Hello humans, this is Random Vassar and welcome to the Random Channel. Today we're going to be doing Medieval Fantasy. <laughs> I don't know why I fucked up on the playing. Uh, Medieval Fantasy Rogue's Choice Chapter 20, A Battle of Godlings. Now, sounds of it, um, it might be the Alethian Godling. I'm not 100% on that, but maybe another Godling will show up. But so far, we have only seen the Thog God, uh, Godling, which we killed, and the Alethian Godling, which we, but, which we are hidden from, I think. Uh, but I'm not sure about that, but we have 17 favor, we have 16 life, we have zero morale, we are currently um, disguised as Galmagus, and this is not gonna end well. Uh, yes, 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 you already did all that. Gods, I pray anything with a kind heart is far from our path, you think? What is, oh, right. Your army, a writhing, screeching, snarling mob of demons pushing forward, smashing all in their path, has rampaged through the streets. More than once, you have shouted at your minions, telling them not to waste time lingering, chasing down anything left alive in this ruins of desecrating corpses. The wind carries in our direction, you idiots. You shout at the pack of uh, torch-wielding uh, demons who are setting fire to everything in sight. Like children, they are incredibly prone to distraction, says Egra. Irredeemably evil children, you say. I realize that taking control of a demon army is clever and a fine way to leverage your father's favor, but now I'm having second. You break off your inner dialogue with Egra to sh uh, shout at a pair of gibbering demons uh, stupidly chasing a stray cat. Do not debase yourself pursuing such prey. The demons don't uh, seem to even hear you, so so set on sprinting terrified uh, ca calico cat. They're killing everything you say to Egra. You would think someone's poor pet would not be the worth the time for the denizen of the abyss, yet they make time. This is the grist of uh, nightmares. I mean, they do make time because they're mortal. I do believe all these demons are immortal, literally. Because even we, uh, in the business choice, we met a very normal demon, not even like a super OP demon, just like a normal demon. And when even that fucker had li lived more than the entirety of humanity or something like that. So yeah. Um, you have surrounded yourself with Orthrax demons, four of them, two in front, two guarding your rear. You choose these uh, ugly brutes as your bodyguards, counting on the fact that they are too delvited to engage in any schemes against you, or that if they do, they would be painfully obvious about it. Still, you keep them at a distance, effectively building a box of blessed space around you in this morass of horror. The lost daughter, Zelva, is flying above, eyeing you. She has an innocent, faint smile, and you're cer relatively certain she's planning to kill you. You point your pike at her and scowl, focus your wits upon finding the swiftest route to the temple, you snarl at her. You must reach it as quickly as possible. Not that you're looking forward to your arrival, Galmagus is near the Temple of Eternal Love, at least that's what Zelva had insinuated. And he's not alone, he commands a company of demons called Butcher Brigade, probably a more powerful host than the one you <laughs> now command. What will he say when he sees you, Sazegra, obviously delving into your thoughts as she often annoyingly does. Chaos and confusion will ensue, your favorite, you say, with a resignation in your conveyed thought. I think it's better to somehow get out of sight to transform back or something. This is probably not good. It is a pity that you cannot appreciate the theoretical folly of it all, says Egra. <laughs> all the world is a coliseum to an immortal such as you. It is easier to be entertained when you're only a spectator. Not so for the gladiators like me. I'm hardly only a spectator, and you're not a slave. Stop dr being dramatic and calling for pity. It is unchampion like. I do not ask for pity, I ask for aid. And before you say that you already do aid me, let me be clear that I mean consistent and thoughtful aid, not just leaving me on my own to choose how to use your favor. Consistency and thoughtfulness has disadvantages, champion. What sort of foolishness is that, you say? Not one sage or man of business, wisdom in the entire multiverse would say something like that. No man am I, says the Egra with a lilt in her voice. What are these complaints about your choices? You wish to con wish me to control you very well. Up ahead, you are to stay left to the fork of the road. This is what I mean, you say. Making choices for me when it pleases you, then at other times, like when it's time to use tricks to power, something that is clearly within your domain, you leave it to me. Not exactly, you say. Not my point exactly, you say. No consistency. Your feedback has been noted and discarded. <laughs> Uh, says Egra. Now give the command for them to take the left fork in the road, or else you will have to lead everyone back the way they came. I don't expect that to be easily done. Taking a deep breath, you shout, Zelva, that road. You point to the left road. Chills her head and frowns as though asking, Are you sure? Thrust the pi uh, tip of your pike in the direction of the left road to emphasize your order, nearly skewering the Orthrax demon in front of you. Uh, Zelva bites her lip, glaring at you for a moment, then turns and relays the order to other flyers who are more or less leading this horde. Clearly, this is not the shortest route to the temple, you say. 
I would have expected you to be eager to arrive at our destination. The path of the trickster is a winding path, says Egra. My father has a score to settle, she adds. Your father has a score to settle with whom? Galmagus? I do not believe Galmagus is as strong as the gods like Alethia and other than that. I do believe he is like a... He is a demon prince to be precise as far as I can tell. I mean... Technically speaking, the 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 god that our, our boy Anuxius killed, I forgot her name, but um, she was a god, right? Yeah, I think she was a lower god. Like she was, she wasn't like OP like Alethea, but she was a she was a she was technically speaking a god. So a uh, demon prince is technically on the same level as her. Okay, so so yeah, that makes sense. That could be possible that Oher might have some shit to do with the Galmagus and whatnot. And. Where were we? Uh, what score, you ask? She doesn't answer and you're distracted anyways. The moonlight is blotted out for a moment and a great buzz rises above the din of the demon horde. The ground beneath uh, you shakes as a large horror of a demon lands nearby. The beast has three sets of wings that buzz like that of an insect. He's a humanoid like a massive man, but his naked body is embedded with little fanged mouths. Uh, reminding you of a little of how Drala's eyes are embedded all over her body. Compared to this, though, Drala is a stunning beauty. Uh, the mouths grind their fangs and hiss as tongue lolls like the main demon you fought earlier. This demon has six arms, three on each side. He carries a long barbed spear in one hand, while all his other arms are occupied with feeding the mouths, ripping bits of meat off what appears to be a person's mangled torso. The creature's face is roughly human with one uh, normal-sized mouth. Which is completely toothless. This is essentially the blob with like insect creep fucking um, features. His eyes are larger than a human's and predatory like a hawk. His nose is wide with flaring nostrils. I smell no fresh flesh that way. And from the air, I see little that moves, speaks the mo uh, mouth demon, thankfully, only speaking with his human like mouth. Excellent, we can move swiftly without distraction, you say. No, shouts one of the mouths of the demon as the others gnash their teeth. We must eat. Other surrounding demons begin to press in, eager to hear your response to this. Um, ooh, that's a good one. Order the nearby demons to eat him. Tell him he can survive for a few locks without slaughter. Yeah, tell the nearby demons to eat him. That sounds funny. You want to eat? You shout as you turn to the near uh, demons nearby. The closest thing being the Orthrax demon you're, you've been using as a bodyguard. The demons erupt in cries of all sorts, yet all are uh, decidedly... Decis decided... What? Decidedly? What the fuck is... Decidedly is not a word. Decisively is a word. Decidedly I've never heard as a word. Um, in, the, in the affirmative. The need him. You command. Pointing at the demon... Uh, mouth demon. Surprisingly, there is a moment of hesitation. Clearly, they did not expect this response. The demons... The mouth demon's eyes widen as his massive wings begin to buzz. Oh, well, that's a good one, comes Zelva's voice. The closest Orthrax uh, lunges towards the mouth demon with his two-handed sword. Life decreases three. Why the hell did it hit me? Um, the mouth demon screams in rage and throws a spear at you as he rises up into the air. You dodge, yet you are unable to avoid the attack completely. The spear punches through your armor, piercing your side. With blood now split, all the nearby demons converse. The mouth demon flies above the earthbound demons but get pulled down by several flyers and pinned to the street. There is the blood you so desperately desire, you proclaim. I mean, is it a good thing that our blood has been spilled? I mean, Zelva would definitely be suspicious of that. Uh, it takes a considerable amount of your strength to push your way out of the f uh, quickly forming throng. Behind you comes the wet sound of raw flesh being ripped apart. Did you learn that from Azazel when she fed uh, that lippy goblin to the wards? As Agra, you don't answer. Rather, you continue to push your way out of the, uh, the pressing crowd. Are soon completely free of them. There's flapping of wings and you brandish your pike up at Zelva who hovers nearby glaring. Uh, Dradre... What drad drood nalash was furious and useful? He is useful now, you say with a wry smile, as food. Zelva scowls for a moment, then smiles, followed by tittering that builds into a full hypish laugh. Great, it is not gonna end well. A great deal of jostling, pushing, and threatening the majority of the uh, demonic host uh, starts down the direction Egra had unreasonably demanded. Zelva notices you, uh, notifies you of a few deserters, mostly demons, on, on the vanguard who have already taken the other path. Uh, before the order was given, as Egra has worn, had warned, getting demons who are on a warpath to backtrack is nearly impossible. You decide that they are not worth the trouble of rounding up. Hopefully, the separate, uh, hopefully separate from the host, they will be uh, picked off by the defenders of the city. That is, if there are any defenders left. I don't think there are any left. 
once all these uh, fiends have nothing left to kill, you can imagine the city abandoned not very long after, reclaimed by the forest, moss covered bones everywhere and overgrown trees splitting the cobblestones. Death make room for life, you think. Agro chuckles in your mind. Sounds like someone is trying to cheer himself up with desperate philosophy. Grit your teeth. Agra, you must promise me that after whatever nonsense you're up to in this war, zo war zone is concluded, then we will swiftly journey to Windborn to find my sister. If you please me, says Agra, with a father of your own, perhaps even an immortal such as yourself can understand love for one's family, you say. I must insist on this. As I told you in the tower, your sister does not require saving, she says. Not yet. Not yet, you say. You're about to argue further when you're distracted by the sight of a pair of Orthrax demon playing catch with an old man, literally throwing him back and forth between themselves. A skinny, frail, man, uh, frail man's body flopping up and down like a rag doll. You jog towards them. As you get closer, you hear the old man screaming in both rage and fright. You and your health's excrement will die. The god of war is near. Give me that. You shout at the demons. One Orthrax, clearly startled by your attention, tosses the man at you. Since you have a spike, um, since you have your pike in one hand, you catch the old man with your other hand and forearm, and soon you have him cradled in one arm. Something you can only do now that you're the size of a giant. He squirms feebly in your grasp. One of his legs is bent in an unnatural angle. Devil spawns come. He croaks. Zelva materializes above you, looking down at the old man. Uh, with interest. What could you possibly want with him? The f uh, few vague ideas pop into your head. What do you do? I shall ravish him. He shall carry a message to our enemies. He will serve as a local guide. I don't know about that. Hmm. The first one sounds like a decrease in morale. Second one, maybe. Yeah, let's do that. I think uh, that sounds fun. Uh, morale increases one, favor increases two. As a messenger, he will be taken out of harm's way, you think. And perhaps I can get a message to Maiden Avis. Oh, clever champion, says Agra. Shall carry a message to our enemies, you say. Zelva tells her head as though unsure what you said. Zelva, find a suitable flyer to deliver this man to the Alethian priesthood with a message. Zelva looks at the old man in your arm uh, appraisingly. He is suicidal and feeble, unsuitable for anything but a humiliating me meal for a gimp orthrax. Yes, he is feeble, which makes him the perfect messenger. It is difficult to be brave when you're weak, so the Alethians will love him for this and heed his words, you say. Zelva shrugs. I suppose they are stupid that way. The old man is squirming, trying to get it, uh, get at one of your unarmed hands, probably to bite you, all the while hurling insults. He obviously doesn't understand Abyssal and the discussion of his fate. As Elvas flies off to find an escort for the old man, uh, you continue to move with the flow of the horde. What is your name? Uh, what is your name, man? I thought you would say old man, but man, I suppose. You ask the old man in common tongue, keeping your voice low. No harm will come to you, indeed. You may even do some good for your people. The monster speaks the tongue of men, eh? Uh, here's your answer. He says, spitting up at your face. Of his saliva only makes it to your armored neck. Roll your eyes. I aim to send you to the Alethian priest unharmed. In exchange, you are simply to give them a message. A message they will want to hear. The man stills himself and stares at you for a moment, catching his breath from his earlier struggles. I go by Winton, devils come, and we ain't well met, and don't expect me to work with the devil's lie. We are demons, not devils, and yes, we lie, as do men, you say. Let the Alethians in the great wisdom decide if my words are true or not. You needs, uh, you needs me for your for devilry, only reason to let good men live, says Win uh, Winton, but his sentence trails off. To decide whether you deliver the message is what you're thinking. Either way, you live, you say with a smile, or I could give you back to those who found you. Mr. pauses for a moment and then croaks. What's your message? Do you know of Maiden Avis, you ask? All men know of that one. Makes an old man wish he were young again, he says. Right, I do believe he's speaking of the same women. <laughs> women, woman. <laughs> That's a good one, you say. This message for her and only her, I'm listening, he says. The demons are on their way to the Temple of Eternal Love, and there is a rooster that struts among them, you say. Was this about a rooster? Uh, asked Winston, his eyebrow raising. She will know. You say with a wink, lowering your <laughs> fucking gal Megas winking at someone, that must be fucking weird. Uh, lowering your voice to a whisper, you go on to tell Winton about the Tunnel of Shame. Uh, there is a goblin passage out. You explain the direction for the tunnel and how, do you t how to take the sewer out. That will uh, get them behind the Lich's force. Perhaps they will choose to strike from the rear, you say finishing up. How I know this ain't a trap for her, uh, says Winton. Hellspawn like you, uh, aim no love for a good woman. Uh, as I said, let her decide, you say. I'll tell her, says Winton. He lies. He does not trust you, says Egra. I have a message of my own for him to carry. Suddenly you're whispering again, Winston's ear, although you do not understand the words. By the time you have a uh, wherewith wherewithal. What the fuck is wherewithal? Withdrawal? I have no idea. To protest uh, Egra's ironclad possession, she is done and you have control again. There's a glazed look in the old man's eyes for a moment, uh, but he swiftly snaps out of it. 
Just then an incubus arrives. He grins at Vinton as he hovers back, uh, hovers above you, flapping his massive black wings. Outstretch, uh, he outstretches his arms, gesturing to take the old man. I will leave his tongue and eyes so that he will be able to deliver your words to. Uh, who is it and where? You will not harm him, you say. The uh, incubus crinkles his perfectly sculpted brows. The lost daughter told me you wanted to send a message. 